All right, guys. So welcome back to Urge. Jameson, Alex here. Ready to move on into the next subclass, which is the Psy Warrior Fighter. So if you're new to the channel or to the subclass series, what we're going to do is, is we're going to go through all the abilities gained in this subclass, and then we're going to rate it based on its roleplay value, combat value, and overall class synergy, based on how the abilities gained in this subclass improve on the base class abilities. Indeed. So without any further ado, Alex, take it away. Sonic Power, level 3. That's what the whole subclass is based on. <laughs> Uh, think Battle Master Fighter, but in a slightly different way. Uh, you get, starting at level 3, a harbor a wellspring of psionic energy within yourself. You're a Jedi. You're a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we had this discussion before you. Uh, you get psionic energy dice, which are D6s. You have a number that equal to twice your proficiency bonus. I try to emphasize the important numbers are twice your proficiency bonus. And they fuel a bevy of powers as listed below. Some of your powers expend a psionic dice when used, as specified below. You get all of your psionic dice back when you finish a long rest. In addition, as a bonus action, you can regain one expended psionic energy dice, but you can't do so again until you finish a short or long rest. So basically, once per rest, you can use a bonus action to get one back. Right. Uh, also, this is important, the... Size of said dice scales with you as well. It becomes a D8 at level 5, D10 at level 11, and a D12 at level 17. So one of the few rare appearances for the good old-fashioned D12. Yes. You have three different psionic energy abilities. One is protective field. Whenever you and another creature you can see within 30 feet takes damage, you can use your reaction to expend one psionic energy die, roll the dice, and reduce the, the damage taken by the number rolled plus your intelligence modifier. So, mm. Eldritch Knight. Um, keep that in mind. That's important here. Yeah. As And you create a uh, momentary shield of telekinetic force. Sonic Strike. You can propel your weapons with Sonic Force. Once on each of your turns, immediately after you hit a target with, within 30 feet of you with an attack and deal damage to it with a weapon, you can expend a one Sonic Energy Dice, rolling it and dealing force damage to the target equal to the number rolled plus your intelligence modifier. And finally, you have telekinetic movement. You can move an object or a creature with your mind. Mm. As an action, you can target one loose object that is large or smaller, or one willing creature, that's important, other than yourself. If you can see the target, it's within 30 feet of you. You can move it up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space you see. Alternatively, it's a tiny object. You can move it to or from your hand. Either way, you can move the target horizontally, vertically, or both. Once you take the action, you can't do it again until you finish a short or long rest, unless you expend a sonic energy die to do it again. So you can do it once or free, and then do it multiple times, how many times you want to spend an energy die to do so. Right. Then, all level three, by the yes. way. Yes. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, lots of options. <laughs> had to cover all that there. Yes. Uh, then at level seven, we have a telekinetic adept. Uh, you gain a couple new telekinetic abilities. Uh, first is psi powered leap. As a bonus action, you propel your body with your mind. You gain flying speed equal to twice your walking speed until the end of the current turn. Once you take this bonus action, you can't do so again, so you finish a short or long rest, or you spend a psionic energy die to take it again. Um, the important part here is until end of turn. Yeah. So I would suggest not ending your turn at the height there because you Correct. will be falling on the next turn Fall uh, on there as well. So keep that in mind. It is definitely a psi-powered leap, not psi-powered flight. Yeah. So. The other option you gain is Telekinetic Thrust. When you deal damage to a target with your Psionic Strike, which is the extra damage ability that Correct. is at level 3, you can force the target to make a Strength saving throw equal to a DC of 8 plus your Proficiency plus your Intelligence modifier. There's the Intelligence again. Uh, if, you, if the save fails, you knock the target prone or move it up to 10 feet in any direction horizontally. So, uh... Assuming you actually hit someone, deal the extra damage, yep. they fail to save, they get knocked down prone, and then you you're a are fighter. a fighter, so you attack, attack, action surge, attack, 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 and you just wail on them. So Dice them up. Can definitely be interesting. Uh, then at level 10, we have Guarded Mind. The psionic energy flowing through you has bolstered your mind. You have resistance to psychic damage. Moreover, if you start your turn charmed or frightened, you expend a psionic energy die and every and end every effect on yourself, subjugating you to those conditions. So you can choose, if you're charmed or frightened, to just not be charmed or frightened. When I'm turned or frightened, I just decide to not be turned or frightened. <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. It's like legendary resistance, but for charmed and frightened for yourself. It's like, if, yeah. I, if I fail the saving throw, I'm just choosing not to fail the saving throw. <laughs> Pretty much. 
At 15, you get Bulwark of Force. As a bonus action, you can choose creatures, which can include you, and it should, (laughs) that you can see within 30 feet. As a number of creatures equal to your intelligence modifier. Mm. Again, each of of the chosen creatures is protected by half cover uh, for one minute. Once you take this bonus action, you can't do it again if it's a long rest, unless you do a psionic energy dice to do so. So all these abilities are... Do it once for free, like either per short rest or per long rest. Right. Unless you want to spend Sonic Energy Dice to keep doing them. And again, you've got a good chunk of Sonic Yeah, you'll have plenty you know. of them. So use them as you see fit. Uh, and finally, at 18, because there's several abilities here, you have Telekinetic Master. Your ability to move creatures and objects with your mind is matched by a few. You become Yoda. Uh, you can cast the telekines- Telekinesis spell uh, requiring no components, and your spell cast ability modifier for the spell is Intelligence. Once in each of your turns, while you concentrate on the spell, including the turn when you cast it, you can make one attack with a weapon. It's a bonus action, because you're a fighter, and you don't attack enough times as it is. <laughs> Once you cast a spell with a feature, you can't do it again. You finish a long rest, unless you spend one use of a Sonic Energy Dice to do it again. So, lots of abilities, lots of Sonic Energy Die uses, which is good, because you have them, and they're there to use. Yes. So, all that being said, we'll move into the rating portion of the video where the first thing is the roleplay value, asterisk as always. Talking about the roleplay value, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically things outside of the initiative order. Right. Not talking about interacting your background, history, lore, fantasy, all that is on you as a player. Can't really rate you as a player, we can only rate the abilities gained in the subclass, and then their potential that you might gain from these abilities that might help you in some of those RP scenarios. So, based on the abilities in this subclass, you'll notice almost every one of these abilities has some minor roleplay potential. Uh, Just being able to move things with your mind, you can do a lot of things with that. Uh, Though some of these are a little bit more limited, like for example it talks about telekinetic movement. Uh, It has to be a tiny object, which you're talking like a tiny object. Anything like a weapon or something like that, I believe, would be considered a small object. So you can't just, like, yank someone's weapon out of their hand or shield out of their hand because yep. those are not going to be tiny objects um, yep. if you're trying to get tricky on them. Because I can see people already thinking about that. Oh, I could just take someone's weapon out of their hand. There's no save or anything. It's like, no, not quite because it's not tiny. Um, right. So that's something to keep in mind. But if you're in prison, for example, and uh, you see the guard walking by with the keys, you could yank one those of the keys. Those can be taken. Those are tiny. So stuff like that can definitely be used in an RP sense. And, of course, the side powered leap, being able to jump or fly, essentially, uh, for a period of time can definitely help you get to places that you shouldn't have any way of getting to. (laughs) No business getting there. Uh, So there's that. And then being able to end charmed and frightened conditions can be important, especially if someone's trying to deceive you or whatever. Uh, There's that. And uh, just being able to cast telekinesis, there's all kinds of shenanigans you can do with that eventually Mm -hmm. as well. Um, That being said, a lot of these things can be a little bit more on the limited side of things because you're getting either limited uses or there's limitations to them, whether it's size limitations or you have to be level 18 to cast telekinesis, which is pretty high up there. Um, So we would just went with a three and a half out of five on the roleplay side Mm -hmm. of things. It gives you a few things that will maybe boost some potential in some RP scenarios, but at the same time, it's nothing that's going to be really crazy out there that's just going to completely mitigate some RP scenarios. Mm Mm-hmm. Onto the combat side of things, um, and we had a last-minute thought on this, which may will you know factors into different things, but we'll go through everything. Um, your sonic dice are it very much feels mechanically like a battle master fighter in the fact that instead yes. of having maneuvers, you've got different abilities you can spend your sonic energy die to use. You know, chances to uh, reduce damage not only for yourself or for but for somebody else. Uh, dealing extra damage um, and important at range of up to 30 feet not super far away but a little bit of a range right uh, being able to jump to get to targets I mean even just cover ground on an opening you know just charge something down you yep. know and really get in there quickly to make sure you don't waste a turn of not being able to do damage if you're you know trying to get in melee range quickly uh, being able to end up being able to knock somebody on their butt with your first attack and then hit yep. them again and again and again and again and again and again and again because you're a fighter, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, being able to end charm and more importantly frightened in combat can be huge. If you're frightened, you can't move toward the thing that's t- frightening you. Right. Uh, so that it's which is a, a bummer for a fighter because <laughs> you can't hit yeah. you can't hit it um, if you're if you're you know melee fighter. 
So that's helpful to us. It's, it's, again, it's, it's not a redo the saving throw against it. It's just, it's yeah. gone. Uh, it's dispel, dispel frightening. Um, Bulwark of Force giving not only yourself, but other people, plus two to AC with half cover. It lasts for a minute, so it's not like a turn or two turns or whatever. So it's got some good length to it. And finally, Telekinesis lets you move something. Immediately, I'm like, okay, what can I drop on somebody's head? <laughs> It's immediately what I'm thinking about. And right. then you can still, while you're concentrating on that spell, still attack an extra time as a bonus action because you're a fighter. You need more attacks. Um, but, and here is the but, intelligence. Yeah. And this is a read. It's, it's going to matter in synergy as well. Um, but mm-hmm. it forces you to put a decent amount of your you know, your skill points, your ability points into intelligence, which is a fighter, unless you're playing Elder Knight, you, it would be your dump stat. Because <laughs> you have almost. almost, you know, almost exclusively, because you don't have a use for it, unless you're specifically trying to build an RP thing on the side that, right. that works. Um, but you have to. But something else we wish this would have, which would definitely help all of its scores especially with the combat and the synergy, is if it would let you attack using your intelligence. Right. Like a Hexblade Warlock. Like a Hexblade Warlock, crazy. or one of the monks in this book does. Spoiler. As, you know, as astral uh, way of the... Uh, astral Self. Astral Self. I was like, what is the second word? <laughs> astral Self will let you attack with your wisdom. It would give more value right. to, to the intelligence, because otherwise you're like, okay, well, you have to go strength and intelligence to make sure your abilities are helpful and right. reliable. Or... Jameson's idea. You could go be a ranged fighter and go pure dex and maybe do like a crossbow expert kind of build mm-hmm. where you're maybe going on hand cross or hand, hand crossbow or uh, short bow maybe. Um, but some of these abilities do require you have to be within 30 feet to activate them as well. So, so it's still kind of awkward there because yeah. you're ranged but you still have to get in within 30 feet. So you can't just stay full range and do all of the abilities that you would be able to do. Right. So it's kind of got that bit of awkwardness. Yeah. You can't really do either one super effectively. So that definitely hurts it from being a high school, higher score. So ultimately we went with a three and a half. Because yes. while there's a lot of inter- interesting and helpful abilities, a lot of these are use it once before you have to spend Sonic on it, energy die to do it. Do right. it once, more Sonic energy die. So you've got a good amount of Sonic energy die per day, right. which will cap at 12, but almost all of your abilities cause you to spend those. Right. So and, you ha- and a lot of them rely, again, on in your intelligence modifier. For mm-hmm. like the save to knock prone yep. relies on the intelligence modifier. So if you yep. have a low intelligence modifier, you're just not going to knock stuff prone. Yep. So and that it- kind of defeats the whole purpose of using that energy. I mean, you're going to get that slight extra damage on there, but that's nothing to write home about. Right. Three and a half. Yes. So I think we pretty much beat that dead horse there about the in- intelligence. So I'm not going to say too much more about it on the synergy side of things, yeah. but it definitely does play a factor because... Right. If you want to go and be wailing on stuff in melee, you need to put points into strength. I mean, you could there could be arguments for decks where you go maybe two weapon fighting or something like that. Um, but again, you're going to have to have a strength or dex stat. And then if you're in melee, you're going to need to have health. You can't just go no, a low con because then yeah. you will just die. Um, you do have armor proficiencies as a fighter, which helps you stay alive. Right. But against things like spellcasters or, I mean, just big boy things, they're just going to hits you anyways, yep. um, especially when you start getting into the upper levels. It doesn't really matter your armor class so much because things have plus 14, 15 to hit. You're going to get hit. 21 AC still gets hit like 70% of the time. So, <laughs> so it, it is its own thing, but at the same time, it, there's some issues with that. And the other thing is if you go full intelligence, then you're going to have a lower chance to hit and lower damage. So you're going to have issues either way uh, with uh, how you do all that. So you're either going to hit less and deal less damage, or you're going to hit more and all of your abilities are going to be weaker. So there's there's definitely some counter uh, in- intuitiveness to this. But having the extra options can definitely be helpful. Absolutely. Um, even if there are limitations based on your ability scores. Yep. So we went at a three and a half. So just subclass, three and a half across the board. Super above average. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. Oh goodness. Um, <laughs> so there's that. It's not bad at anything. No. It's just not great at anything either. Right. Um, if you can find a way to maybe make a build where you rely less on uh, damage or maybe 
you, like I said, you kind of do like a hybrid mid rangey kind of character. You can maybe find a good build to work around both mm -hmm. of these weaknesses. You just go dex and intelligence and kind of maybe a little bit in con and yeah. try to stay away from stuff, being able to use your Psy Leap and stuff to maybe get in and out of combat. Mm -hmm. You could maybe make it work and maybe we're underestimating it a little bit, but it's going to be really questionable. You're going to be really, really creative and really like critical thinker. Yeah, you're going to have to figure out how to work with those uh, stat, balancing those stats and actually mm -hmm. having them be to get the full effect. Right, or un stats. unless you your group does rolls random stats and you just roll nuts and go Yahtzee. <laughs> that's, that's, that's always an option. <laughs> so, so. But guys, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Uh, but before we finish, we have a quote from Tasha. Cause she has a, a little comment about every single these subclasses. What she say about this one? So far, my favorite quote of all of them. Mm. Um, reminds me of myself. No, I'm, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm really not, though. Um, brains over brawn, mind over matter. These canny warriors rightly answer, why not both? There you go. Boom. Why not both is because you have to balance the ability scores, and it's kind of hard to do yeah. that. That's why you that, don't do both. Usually. Mechanically, <laughs> mechanically, that's why not both. Yes. Now, thematically, yes, why not both? Yes. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications so all of our new videos are coming out. If you want to see more from us about Tasha's the different categories, maybe uh, other video... Things you want to see, magic items and stuff like that, let us know in the comments down below. Because we did do the tattoo video We already, did do the tattoo so. video. We did do an unboxing of these things. So yeah, because that guy. Make sure you check that out, too, because yeah. these are pretty cool. Definitely a step up from the older versions of the Icons of the Realms minis, so make sure you check that out. Mm -hmm. I'd like to do more of that kind of stuff in the future, but we'd love to also see what you guys are looking for. So yep. let us know in the comments down below. And as always, guys, thanks, thanks for watching. watching.